Give thanks to Him and praise His holy name. For the Lord is good. His love endures forever and ever. His faithfulness continues throughout all generations. Amen and amen. amen. The Word of God for the people of God. Amen. amen. What kind of a relationship is it? If the conversation and the relationship is only about asking for something, how would it be in a marriage if the only conversation that took place in that marriage would be the husband saying this? Hey, can you go get me some coffee? Hey, can you go get me some this? Hey, can you go get me the, Can you go get my shoes? Can you go get the paper? Can you go get this? Can you get this? Can you get this? How do you think it would be if, 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 if it was the wife? Can you go do that? I shouldn't even put it that way. Uh, there's no can you. There's no please in this. Let me be real. <laughs> you go do this and you go do that and you go do this and you go do that. What kind of a relationship would that be? Would it be tense? Would it be fraught with friction? Would it be one that you recognize and realize that he doesn't love me or she doesn't love me? She or he is just using and abusing me. Isn't that right? Isn't that how we feel? Of course it is. May I say to you, is that not how we treat God sometimes? You recognize and realize, I hope, that praise and prayer go hand in hand. They're just like the right hand and left hand. You can't have praise without prayer. You can't have prayer without praise. And prayer is not, Lord, give me, give me this, and Lord, give me, give me that. That's not prayer. Prayer is not, Lord, you do. He's not a dog that we're trying to train to jump through a hoop. He's God. He is God Almighty. He's the, the, the God of all creation. The God who inhabits eternity. He is not a bellhop that, that runs when we whistle. This is not the slant drive-in that runs when we call. This is God Almighty. And what we have forgotten, what we have thrown to the side because of the culture in which we live and because of our own humanity, we have forgotten to praise Him. Haven't we? Have you ever been, and, and, and I say this in the context of me, I can't speak, you can't speak for me. Sicily, in Italy, or off the coast of Sicily, I took a cable ride up to the top of Mount Etna. And at the top of Mount Etna, way above the clouds, looking down on the plain before me, it flew by as I saw how pretty it was. I went to the Alley Capri and went to the Blue Danube, the Geo. You go to this cave, when you look above, it's blue, intensive blue. The water in the cave is, is blue and sparkling because, again, it's, it's Geo, basically, the, the, the cave caved in, and all you've got left are the crystalline, sparkly features of that cave. I've seen sights on my travels in the Navy that, 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 that still that are in my head. They're wonderful, marvelous sights. They're awe-inspiring. They're breathtaking signs that when you stand there and you look out over these signs, your heart flutters and, and you, you stand there just utterly amazed at God's great creation. Don't you? Have you ever been to the Grand Canyon? Yes. You who have? Is it not awe-inspiring? Yes. For those that have gone to other places, is it not awe-inspiring? Of course it is. And when we see that, doesn't it, doesn't it elicit or evoke from us? Something of awe, something that says, oh my goodness, or, or something? That's not ought to be able to be. Every day that we wake up, every day that we live, we should be so awe-inspired by God's greatness and God's goodness that we cannot help but praise Him. Amen. Because if we ever lose the sense of praise in life and in our prayers, we're doomed to a life of ineffectiveness. We're doomed to a life of misery. And we're doomed to a life where God will not and cannot receive glory because we're so shallow and so spiritless and so joyless and so hopeless that all we care about are the self-centered things of this temporal life. And when we get there and we can't extricate ourselves from that mindset, we lose the joy of life, we lose the joy of living because we've lost the ability to praise Him for who He is and what He does and what He's doing.
and what He will do. Amen. Yes. And so we're reminded by the psalmist in these five stanzas of his song of praise. In these verses, every verse has an element of, 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 of something, an element of praise, an element of, 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 of all. In verse 1, this exhortation, make a joyful noise. How can we not? How can we not look upon God's created universe and not express with some sound, some joy-filled sound, our gratitude and our acknowledgement of God in it? This exaltation in verse 2. Serve the Lord with gladness as we understand how good God is and how good God is to us. How can we not be filled with joy and gladness? And how can we not express unto Him and to others our joyfulness and our gladness at what God has done? There's an explanation. How, how so? Why are we so joy-filled? Why are we so hope-filled? Why are we so awestruck? Know you not that God is the Lord? Do you not know that He's a covenant God? Do you not know that He's a covenant keeper, not a God? Do you not know that God has made a promise to us? Do you not know that God has been good to us? Of course we do. And in verse 4, there's an expression. Therefore, enter into His gates with thanksgiving. How can we not? How can we not enter into His course of praise? How can we not enter into His course? How can we not enter into His house? And how can we not lift up our voices collectively and individually? And how can we not express to Him before others how thankful we are? Are you thankful? Amen. Are you thankful? Yes. Are you thankful? Yes. yes. All right. What have you got to be thankful for? <laughs> what has God done for you? What has God done for us? What has God done for others? We can witness, can we not? Amen. We can testify, can we not? Then why don't we? Can you testify that God has healed you? Yes, you can. Yes, can you testify that God has graced you and God has given you strength? That God has been with you in dark places? God has been good to you? Yes, you can. Yes. And because of that, then we express ourselves verbally before Him and before others. We express thanksgiving <coughs> and we do so with joy-filled hearts. We do so with expressions and gra I, 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 of gratitude. In verse 5, the extension of it all. That His mercy is everlasting, His truth endures forever. In this, in this psalm, we find a movement of gratitude in, in all five verses. There's grace to praise God. There's grace to serve God. There's grace to know God. There's grace to thank God. There's grace to see God. And in verse 1, we, we hear Him command us. And He says before us the necessity of praise we must make. There's, a, there's an urgency, there's a, an elicitation, if you would. I, 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 I. <coughs> God is not a hard sell at all, is He? I can't, I don't like a hard sell. I don't like it. When I walk into a place, I know what I want, I don't want to be bothered. I don't want somebody coming up to me and trying to strong arm me. I don't want them in my, I don't want them to be and bother me. Do you? I don't like that. God doesn't have to do that, does He? God does not have to strong arm us. God does not have to elicit anything from us. God has already done everything that God could do, everything necessary, so that you and I stand and we must make praise. Don't we? We have to. There's something inside of us, something trying to get out of us that expresses itself verbally in this joyful noise. There's the necessity of praise, the noise of praise. We make a joyful noise. It is hard to criticize in the midst of blessings, isn't it? May, may I be ugly? I will, but yeah, I'm asking permission. <laughs> I have never yet heard, I, I, I rarely hear somebody where they're slurping down a, a plate of food that they enjoy. I seldom hear them fuss, do you? I can't, I can't, I can't. I never heard that. And you won't either. What I hear them is like, oh man, <laughs> I can hear grunts of praise. You know, I can hear grunts of adoration. I can hear sounds of enjoyment. Can't you? May I invite you to the buffet of God's blessing? May I invite you to the table of God's blessings? And as you and I go to the buffet of God's blessings, may I invite you to partake to your field. And as you look upon the buffet of God's blessings, may I ask you, what do you see? 
Do you not see God's blessings in everything that we have, everything that we are, and everything that we do? Yes, we do. You ought to thank God because you can criticize because if I was God, you wouldn't. Amen. Amen. I promise you, if I was God, I promise you, I could stop this stuff, couldn't you? Chris Ryan, go ahead, please. I'm begging you. I'm asking you. Criticize me. I'll snuff your cat without an argument. Amen? <laughs> and so should we not be grateful? Should we not be grateful that God is more just than I am? That God is more graceful than I am? That God is more good than I am? You better believe it. You better believe it. And so there, there's this necessity to praise Him. We thank Him for the privilege, too. We serve the Lord with gladness. We come before His presence with singing. How can we not be glad? Can we not be glad? We ought to be glad because He's redeemed us. We ought to be glad because He loves us. We ought to be glad because He forgives us. We ought to be glad because He affirms us. We ought to be glad because He saves us. We ought to be glad because He's saving us. We ought to be glad because He's made a way of access to it. We ought to be glad because we have His Word before us. We ought to be glad because we've got His Spirit within us. We ought to be glad because we're surrounded by His fingerprints. We ought to be glad because we're surrounded by His goodness. We ought to be glad. We're surrounded by His greatness. We ought to be glad. We're surrounded by, by His generosity. We ought to be glad. We're surrounded by His extravagant love and grace and mercy. We ought to be glad in everything that we say. We ought to be glad in everything that we do. We ought to be glad. How can we not be glad? How can we, how can we not be glad when we understand how good God is? Is that not why we have communion? Is that not why we bend the knee and bow the head before Him? Is that not why we come to break and break together on our knees? So that we can say to Him in a tangible expression of our adoration and awe and love that we love You because You first loved us. We who are unlovely, we who are undeserving, we who are without merit, we who have no favor, we who were damned, doomed, and lost. I don't know about you, but I'm glad for a hill called Mount Amen. I'm glad for an old rugged cross. I, we, everybody ought to know. Amen? Yes. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Yes. He's the lily of the valley. He's the bright morning star. He's the Savior. He's the Redeemer. He's the Advocate. He's the Mediator. He is God Almighty. God in flesh. God who loves us. God who still loves us. Amen. God who stands on my account, on your account. Everybody ought to be glad. I thank God because He's my shepherd. We are the sheep of His pasture. Aren't you glad? Yes. The Lord's my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Amen. He prepares the table before me and all the rest. Yes, I'm going to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I ain't scared. I'm not scared. Why? Because my God's good. Amen. Amen. My God's great. Amen. Amen. My God's gracious. My God's loving. My God's caring. My God is a God above all gods. Amen. Amen. I ought to be glad. I ought to praise Him. I ought to shout it out as loud as I can. I ought to continue to. I ought to never have locked jaw. Because God's been good to me. Amen. God's been good to you. God's been good to us. And God's been good to others. And so should I not sing? Should I not enter into His court singing His praise? Should I not enter into His court singing with all that I am and all that I have? May I say to you, it's not that hard. For you who made banana pudding the, the other day, I was singing your praise, amen? <laughs> That's the best banana pudding I ever put in my mouth, you know? Somebody made a, you know, somebody made a roast like my mama did the other Sunday. When I walked by, there wasn't a whole lot left. I'm like, come on now, Lord. I looked over the pot, and there was just a little bit left, and I'm like, thank you, Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, Jesus. And I was praising the Lord, man, because that was roast like my grandmother. And when I, when I ate that morsel of meat, and that taste of meat and gravy hit my palate, man, I mean, it, 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 it reminded me of my mom. My, 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 my. It's not everything that we do. It's not everything that we taste in God's creation. 
remind us of our Heavenly Father who loves us so much He died on Calvary's cross for us to set us free? Amen. Is there not something that God has done for you and something that God has done to you that can't elicit from you praise, thanks, and thanksgiving? Has God been good to you? Yes. Can you thank Him? Yes. Can you praise Him? Amen. Can you? Yes. Somebody ought to. That's right. God is good. All the time. His mercy is everlasting. And His truth endures to all generations. You know, God is so great, He's greater than all your problems. Amen? Amen. God is so great, He's greater than all of our failures. Amen? And God is so great, He's greater than all our foes. Amen? I messed up one time, and I really had that. I was a young pastor, and I mean, I was just all hiking because the Lord had been dead with me all night long for a message. And at that time, I did a pastoral prayer, and I was just trying to get to the preaching. You know? And I bowed my head and I said, God is good. God is great. Let us thank Him for our... And I called myself, I'm like, ooh, they did. And I realized when I just said, you know what? God is good. God is great. Let us thank Him for our. Let us thank Him for our lives. Let us thank Him for our faith. Let us thank Him for our grace and His grace. Let us be graceful and let us be grace filled and let us be people of joy and people of joyfulness. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Can you make a joyful noise to the Lord? Can you share His goodness and greatness to all generations? If you can't, shame on you. hear me? Shame on you. Because somebody has turned off your nightlight. And somebody has disconnected you from God. Because you hear me well. You hear me well. You hear me well. If you're sitting on the sound of my voice, and your heart is heavy this morning, it's because you choose for today. If your heart is heavy and your heart is broken and you're discouraged and disillusioned, it's because something has disconnected you from God. Something that is in, is in your life so big, it's in your life so big, so huge, that the shadow is overwhelming His grace. The shadow is shutting out His joy. The shadow is so big, looming so large, you've lost perspective. You can't see God's goodness and you can't see God's greatness and you can't see God's grace. You can't see God's love. You can't see what God has done. You can't see what God will do. May I invite you before you get here to go there? Amen. May I invite you before you come here to go before Him and ask Him, God forgive me for being joyless. God forgive me for being whatever. God allow me to be Open hearted, God allow me to be open minded as long as your brains don't fall out. God allow me to be joy filled. God allow me to know you, to experience you in a way that I have forgotten. If you would, you can respond after me. Glory to God on mine. Is that okay? Glory to God on mine. God is spirit. They that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Glory, Glory to God, God on high. God is light. If we are in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Glory, Glory to God on high. God is power. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as if they were eagles. They shall run. And not be weary, they shall walk and not grow faint hearted. Glory to God. God's love. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon all of us, and that we should be called sons and daughters of Almighty God. Hereby we discern the love of God, because He lays down His life for all of us. Glory to God. Hearts lifted, eyes open. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are known. And all hearts are open. All desires known, from whom no secrets can be hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration 
of the Holy Spirit so that we might perfectly love you and magnify your name as we serve and worship in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior. Amen. Amen. If you would after this, if you would respond, Lord, be gracious. Lord, be gracious. Help us obtain this blessing. Is that okay? Lord, be gracious. Help us obtain this blessing. Okay? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Lord, be gracious. Help us obtain this blessing. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Lord, be gracious. Help us obtain this blessing. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Lord, be gracious. Help us obtain this blessing. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Lord, be gracious. Help us to obtain this blessing. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Lord, be gracious. Help us to obtain this blessing. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Lord, be gracious. Help us to obtain this blessing. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Lord, be gracious. Help us to obtain this blessing. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are all of you when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, because the prophets also were persecuted in like manner. Lord, be gracious unto us. Help us to obtain this blessing. Hearts and eyes lifted up before the Lord. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Maker of all things, Judge of all humanity, we acknowledge our many sins which we commit and have committed by thought, by word, and by deed against you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Here and now we do repent of our sins. They grieve us as we remember against you, and you only have we sinned, although we sinned against others of our human family who have been and are created in your likeness. Have mercy on us, Heavenly Father. Forgive us of all that is past, that which is present, and that which we commit in the future through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Grant unto us that as we seek to serve and worship you, that we would live a newness of life, so as to honor and glorify your name. Hear the good news. To those having a sorrowful and contrite heart and a willing mind, if any person sin, we have an advocate for the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He it is who is the propitiation for our sins, and not just for our sins, but the sins of the whole world. Did you know that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners? Did you know that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son to save those who believe on Him? They who do so, who believe on Him, will not perish but have everlasting life. Is this not indeed good news? Almighty God, you who are our Heavenly Father, you who are, who in your tender mercy did give us a, as a sacrifice for our sins, your own Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who suffered death on the cross for our redemption and salvation. Upon the cross, he made a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world and did command us to continue to celebrate this memorial of his precious death. Hear us, merciful Father. For we do beg of you that while that we, while receiving this bread and wine, might become partakers of the divine nature through men. On the night upon which he was betrayed, having taken up the bread, given thanks for it, and gave it to his disciples, he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for use. Do this in memorial and remembrance of me. Likewise, Jesus also took up the cup, and when he had offered thanks, he gave it to the disciples and said, Drink all of this, all of this cup. And when he had offered thanks, he gave it and said, that Drink all of this because it is the blood of the new covenant, which will be shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you remember. 